Yo, and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. Doing a little bit different video today. Uh, I wanted to go through some things regarding uh, the cards that I'm selling. This this box right here, actually. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do a thing, kind of going through the mindset, the method, and the math behind everything. And the first thing, I just want to take you guys along on the journey and be incredibly transparent about why I'm doing this, what it's doing, and really, is it working out? You know, I think that uh, it's a it's a good thing to just kind of show your cards. And that's what I'm going to, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, but that's what I'm going to do is show you guys kind of everything that, that goes into this process. So um, let's get the dogs to chill out. Um, so what I want to do first is go through the mindset and... I got a comment on the original video that I did on Monday that I wanted to read to you guys because I thought it was interesting. And I, Betty's not the only one thinking this, and and it's uh, interesting. Uh, this is from Huddy22. So if you didn't want to be called out, you shouldn't have written a comment, but there you go. Uh, his comment says, this day of reckoning always seems to be coming for you YouTube influencers who seem to have endless resources on camera. As a married man myself, I often watch and wonder how you guys get away with it. Even Garrett just had a fire sale. Life is expensive. I just wonder how many of those cards for sale in that box were gifted to you from your fans. So let me address the last part first. Uh, I actually don't think there's any cards in here that were gifted to me from my fans. And the day of reckoning, I'm not selling these cards because I have to, because I have some dire family financial need. If I did have a dire financial family need or whatever, I would sell everything in here in a heartbeat and not think twice about it. That is not the case. I am selling these because I want to. This is a want. I want to see if I can turn this box of a lot of cards that I love, but just don't fit anywhere anymore to into something that will fit my long-term collection and bigger cards. I just want to see if I can do it. I want to leverage what I've accumulated into something else. And that's not a day of reckoning. It's not a, you know, there's no have to here. This is a want to. And I thought it'd be kind of a fun experiment, if nothing else. And just to see. Uh, and the response from you guys has been overwhelming. Um, and so let me, since Monday, I put the video out at like four o'clock. By 4.20, I was getting emails with people kind of claiming cards and, and that's the way I set it up. By no means am I an expert on this. This was really kind of fly by the seat of your pants and figure it out as you go. No question. Uh, I'm not an expert at selling. And so what I simply wanted to do was, you know, come up with a way and learn as I go. Right. And I've learned a lot, even in the last 48 hours, we're now about 48 hours since I did that video. And uh, so anyway, what I did was as I got emails, my inbox was flooded. And so I started at the at the first one, so to speak, and started going through. And a person might put three or four cards that they were wanting to, to buy. And so basically, I would go to the box, I would pull those cards, and I would put a little sticky note with whose name and kind of the total. Email that person back. Hey, yeah, these are available. Uh, here's your total. Send it to my PayPal. And uh, yeah, so that was step one was pull the cards, get them there. Once the person paid, then I went to my spreadsheet, my Google sheet that's out there, which there'll be a link down below. There's still a ton of cards. If uh, you guys are still looking <laughs> or still wanting to shop a little bit, but, uh, and I'll get to all the math by the way, in just a minute. So still going through the method. So then I, took the uh, cards once they were paid for, took them off the list and using, if they PayPal'd me, I could uh, most of the times print a label off of PayPal shipping. What is it called? Ship station. That's what it is. And a little bit cheaper to do it that way. And so I would put the dimensions of the bubble mailer. By the way, all the cards, if you paid by last night, Tuesday night, they're on the way to you already. So uh, yeah, they're, they're already gone. And, uh, 
that's, you know, you just got to get into a process. You got to get into a groove. And as I went further and further up the emails, then by the way, once I finished with that person, I moved all of those emails from that person, the back and forth that we might have uh, getting everything finalized over to a special folder that I had specifically called card sales. It's not rocket science. And I just moved them over there. So I still have record of them, but they're not clogging up my inbox. So I just moved them uh, over there. Once I got done with the transaction, with the like everything's done and settled. And so then I would move on to the next one. And sometimes as, as I got further along, cards would already be claimed and gone and paid for. And so I would tell them, hey, these two cards aren't there anymore, but these three are. Do you still want them? Yes, no. And there would be a back and forth and finally a settlement on that. And then payment cards are moved, et cetera. And that just kept me moving up the list of emails. As I got emails out of the way, I could then progress through to each person in order and sequence as to when they emailed me. So yeah, um, it's been great uh, so far. I'm going to now show you another method. How do you, people have asked me, how do I, how did I price everything? And that's actually pretty simple. I'm going to use this card as an example, because this card is still available. Uh, 2011 tops tier one Babe Ruth bat card number to 99. So that card's still there. So I, Literally for every card, there's 753 cards that I ended up putting on that spreadsheet. And so for each card, just like this one, I went here on eBay and I'll show you what I did. So I'd go here on eBay and I'd simply type in the, the name of the card and I would scroll down to kind of see if there were any out there. So here's one at 450. Here's one at 399, 399, 350. Right. And so that's it. So that's the ones that are for sale right now that you could buy right now. And I thought, well, it's all well and good. Anybody can ask for whatever they want to sell it. What are they actually selling for? So I'd go down here and I'd go to sold listings. And you can see here the last one uh, ended recently, 333. Uh, and that's it. So only one is sold in the last 60 or 90 days, however long it is that eBay keeps sold listings up, let's just say recently. So 333. So what did I do? I priced it at 325. That's what it's going for on my spreadsheet. So I always tried to be at or slightly below whatever the last one sold. I want you, I want you guys to get a good deal, but I also want to get fair value for my cards, right? I mean, because the truth is I could go sell it on eBay and get 333 potentially, right? But the reality is I wanted to make it as fair both ways, right? And so that's why I said in the original video, no haggling, because I made everything fairly priced. And that's, <laughs> I am, I, I get the comments slash teasing, criticism, whatever word you want to use about, well, Mike, you never pay sticker. So why do you expect us to pay sticker? And uh, I get it. I totally get it. But uh, again, I tried to price everything mm -hmm very fairly. And uh, a lot of guys were all over that. Um, and let me know if I price something high, I'll, I'll reconsider it. But I really don't think that I did because I literally went through every card over the last couple of weeks to look at the current prices just to see if it was fair. And uh, so anyway, that's one example of pricing a card. I did that 752 more times, basically on every single card. And some of them surprised me at how much they were going for. And some of them surprised me at how little they were going for. And I didn't, it just was what it was. All right, let's get to some of the math. Uh, the first question you might have is, well, Mike, how much did you pay for all of this stuff? And my simple answer is, I have no freaking idea. Uh, these are all cards accumulated over the last 15 years. So, and they're all raw stuff, non-graded stuff, which I, graded stuff I keep on a spreadsheet. I keep it in BCP, what I paid for it, the date, everything. The kind of just random stuff, I just, I don't know. Uh, I don't have any idea what I paid for this Ruth Relic. I don't even know when I bought it. I have no idea. I know I've had it a long time, but I couldn't tell you what I paid for it. And honestly, it kind of doesn't matter what I paid for it other than when it comes to the tax time. And I will do my best to kind of reconstruct something when I figure out how much I paid for, you know, basically the cost of goods sold, right? I will do a good job estimating what that might be. 
but I don't know what I paid for the Ruth card. It doesn't matter because it's going for what it goes for. Whether I paid 500 for it or 100 for it, it's a $333 card last sold on eBay. So that, that's kind of the old is what it is. And so I, I didn't price anything with any thought of what I have into it because I really didn't know. So it was easy not to just to ignore that because I it was easy to ignore. Um, so that that's kind of the method of how I went about getting it. And what did I why did I choose what I chose? Um, I guys, I had I'm up. I think I have three thirty five hundred or had I've sold a lot of them now. Thirty five hundred Hall, Hall of Fame autographs unnecessarily too many. And so that was, I just went through and stuff that I wanted to keep, I kept and I put it in, it's in another box. Uh, I kept hundreds and hundreds of autographs that I didn't put in this box. And so I, I still have plenty and I didn't get rid of any players that I didn't already have. Um, it's not like I'm exhausting myself of any hall of famers for their autographs. The relics just became, I still have a bunch of relics. I have relic sets of I had multiple more Babe Ruth relics, Gehrig, you know, Wagner, Cobb, you name it. Uh, I kept my Christy Mathewson, for example. So there are some that I kept, but a Don Sutton relic I can get whenever I want. That's not a big deal. So it goes in the box to be sold. If that's something that ever becomes important to me again. All right. The part you've been waiting for, the math. Um, let me share that screen. Uh, let's see. So I'm keeping all of this on another spreadsheet uh, that I have, and I took all the names off, just so you won't know. I've done uh, 35 transactions so far. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm putting down the number of cards that that person bought, the gross amount that I collected, the net amount, which would be net of PayPal fees, uh, any shipping costs, and so that gives me a net net. So you get to a net, then you have shipping, and then you get to a net net. I also am tracking 30, you know, no, I'm sorry, that's what that says. I'm tracking the dollars per card that I'm getting because I'm very, I'm just kind of curious about that. Um, because what I came up with when I added all the value of those cards is down here on the left. And that is uh, basically, let me get where you guys can see this a little bit better. Yeah, it's already there. Okay. So down here, a little over 20 grand is what I valued all of these cards at. And so that's a pretty good chunk of change, right? And, and my goal, as I said in the first video, is half of it's going to go to me, half of it's going to, I put to Julie, just, uh, it's just going to go towards stuff, you know, for us, uh, non-card stuff, basically anything non-card, right? And I think that's just a good strategy, a good way to think about it. If I want to buy these other cards, but I'd like to also kind of recapture some of that capital into our family that I may have spent over the years on these cards. Right. So who doesn't want to get a return on their money? Uh, that's and I, again, I don't know what I paid, so I don't really know how much profit, so to speak, I'm getting. But uh, so down here, I've got a bunch of summaries. Um, so far, I've sold 180 cards out of the 753. That means there's 573 left. So this is just all formulatic. It's going through and I made formulas to calculate every time I sell a card. It reduces the number of cards left. But I started with 753. So far, I have grossed, uh, make this a little bit bigger even, hold on, uh, $4,371. I've paid $73 in PayPal fees, which is 1.67%. Uh, that's low, but it's only low because a lot of guys paid me friends and family, which I didn't ask for, honestly. In fact, the more that people do that, the more likely that my account will get flagged by PayPal. So it's not the end of the world, but and it's nice. Um, but then if they also pay me friends and family, then I can't use the PayPal ship station. So what I, it's, it's basically a wash because then I have to go to the post office and buy the, the shipping. I don't have another shipping method to use like a Shippo account or something like that, which would be smart to get someday, but I don't have that now. And so I have to go pay a dollar or so more, you know, 
I'm not paying the PayPal fees, but I got to pay a little more to ship it. It ends up being okay. So what I charged, what I'm charging is $6 shipping for everybody. You can see the shipping costs here per thing. Uh, I had a couple of guys that were Canada. And so their shipping costs are here. This was a big number of cards. And I still, even though it was $12 to ship that box of, uh, a guy bought all 48. He got, he bought all of my $5 relics, one big lot. He wanted all of them. He ended up getting them net to me, uh, $3 and 98 cents per card after you take out the expenses, right? Cause 210, uh, I gave him a little bit of a break on it. Net yada, yada. Right. So that was, uh, a big set. My biggest one so far is six hundred and twenty dollars. One guy, nineteen cards. Uh, so that that's great. I had hoped to kind of get about twenty dollars, twenty to twenty five dollars a card. So far, I am at twenty two dollars and sixty four cents per card on average. Again, some of them five dollar relics, some of them hundred dollar autographs. So the average is going to, you know, that's, that's what an average is, right? high and the low. So, so far, again, if I've sold net net about four grand, which is awesome. You can see that I basically just split that in two, two grand towards my Gehrig, two grand plus towards Julie, which is awesome. Um, I have some guys, then I put over here, you know, have they paid? Uh, I have some expenses here. I had to go buy some more bubble mailers and, uh, you know, painter's tape and scotch tape, all kinds of stuff that I was like, whoa, I'm low on this stuff. And so I had to go buy a bunch of stuff at Walmart, 40 bucks worth of that. And you got you to gotta account for all of that. I, I, want, I want it to be as accurate as it can be. Uh, there's a few guys that are paying me in Strongsville, which is great. I've got their cards set aside. I'll take them with me next month to Strongsville. One gentleman didn't have PayPal, so he's sending me a check. And that's fine too. So yeah, so basically I have 16 grand left of value is what I still think is is there to be sold still in this box. But it was a five row box. It's now a four row box. And uh, I still have, I don't know, five or six orders to fill tonight uh, of people that have requested and, and or paid and I just got to get, get them pulled, pulled, put together and all that. So it'll it'll adjust a little bit i do expect it to slow down uh significantly over the next week uh, i just think people will lose interest basically they'll move on to the next thing but uh yeah that's the math so far it's been great and everybody's been awesome very understanding very prompt in paying very prompt in responding and that's great because you know, the next person might request a card. And if I have it sitting waiting for someone to get back to me, you know, I don't want to keep you guys waiting as, as much as I can. And uh, but so far, it's been a great experience. And the messages of support that you guys have sent along with your request for cards have been great. And it's been encouraging. And I love it. So, yeah, that's a lot of stuff that I just covered. And I hope to do this video and update it, you know, maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks, just to kind of let you know my progress in terms of how many cards I've sold. And again, I expect it to slow down. So the updates might be um, not as <laughs> profound, but I want to, again, be transparent, be open and honest about this because it's, it's, I hope you guys enjoy learning behind the scenes and seeing, well, I wonder how, my, how Mike's doing or whatever. You may not be, who knows? Uh, but we'll see. So that's it. That's kind of what's going on. That's where we're at right now, 48 hours after the launch of this idea. And again, I appreciate everybody's support. We'll talk to you guys soon. Go check out the spreadsheet down below to see if there's any cards that you still want. We'll talk to you soon. Keep collecting.